Schramm, and you're watching The Business of Success. On this episode, we'll discuss the importance of branding. In his book, The Brand Within, my client and friend Damon John observed that during Barack Obama's first campaign, the Yes We Can presidential campaign, he used a ubiquitous letter O that was red, white, and blue. It appeared on car bumpers, in front yards, on windows everywhere. Coincidentally, the Pepsi company changed its logo to incorporate another letter O similar to Obama's in the same colors. That wasn't just serendipity. The Pepsi company seized on an opportunity, capitalized on a national movement and cashed in on the success of Obama's campaign. That teaches us a lesson that we should be aware that when it comes to trademark, branding, and competitive marketing, there are no accidents. It's all part of an overall strategy designed by a company to convey a specific message. In today's competitive global environment, companies spend millions of dollars creating and designing an effective logo or brand to coordinate in their marketing and branding efforts. In fact, they employ psychology of color, of design, to create a persuasive, cohesive message that aligns with their vision and their mission statement and their overall corporate philosophy. These messages tend to be targeted at achieving one or all of at least three goals. One, to convey the corporate message and align it with a tagline. Two, to convey corporate history and community connection. And finally, three, to elicit emotional, physical, and psychological response. One of the most legendary examples of this process of design is the current FedEx trademark, which was created in 1994 by New York design artist Lyndon Leder. Prior to that, the FedEx company logo was staunchy. It was square. It was regimented, featuring red, white, and military blue. But as the company approached the 21st century and globalization, that definitively American mark was not as well received in other parts of the country and didn't convey the, the same message. So Fred Smith, the founder and CEO of FedEx, set out to modernize the image of Federal Express. And so he hired Leader to give him a more comfortable image. Leader was known for his frequent use of negative white space in order to veil hidden meaning. The old Bank of America logo, which he created and which was one of his favorite, used negative white space to form the B and the A in Bank of America into the image of an American eagle. Lyndon envisioned the new FedEx logo to be similar to that in simple and clear design concepts. With that in mind, he set about to design the now iconic Federal Express logo. Fred Smith was a savvy client with a very obvious design and marketing idea of his own. He had built Federal Express into a massive global present and he realized that people still thought of FedEx as primarily a US company with limited overnight package delivery services in that country. In part because of that regimented military blue logo. He wanted to revise that image with a new modern graphic designed to create a brand image makeover. He said, my trucks are moving billboards. And he told Lennon, Lyndon, I better be able to see a FedEx truck loud and clear from five blocks away. Tasked with the goal of rebranding the company, Lyndon set about to design that new logo. Drawing from his experience with Bank of America and the use of negative white space, he created an embedded arrow between the orange E and the blue X to subtly convey the idea that FedEx is moving in a forward direction with speed and precision. 
If the arrow remained hidden in the white space, it gave the idea of power and it contains an element of surprise. Understatement is much more elegant, said Lyndon. Since its creation, the FedEx logo has garnered over 40 design awards and been identified as one of the top 10 logos in the last four decades by Rolling Stone magazine. In 2006, Apple took a page out of Lyndon's design concept of simple and clear and the use of negative white space when they emblazoned the lids of their popular PowerBook or MacBook computers with its famous now glowing, literally glowing, in the negative white space from the surrounding solid metal. Apple's logo is intended to convey a zen-like simplicity, similar to Linden's, that literally beckons you to take a bite out of it, evoking the biblical imagery of Eve's temptation of Adam with the prospect of knowledge gained from Apple's tree of life. Their corporate philosophy of simplicity is also reflected in the way their products are designed and the way they tightly regulate their operating systems. The result is that the consumer buys into that messaging and in fact they're often described as a cult or fanboys. Successful companies will also consider the impact of color on their customer to design their trade dress, their trademark, drawing on psychological principles and research uh, to choose colors that elicit certain specific feelings and impressions that the company wants to convey. Psychologist tells us that the bold color of red, for example, evokes feelings of excitement and youthfulness. It also conjures up the impulse to eat, which is why it's frequently associated with food, the food industry, in logos like Coca-Cola, Dairy Queen, Kellogg's, Nabisco, KFC, and Heinz. That's not an accident. Many of these companies also employ the use of bright red in their ancillary trade dress, such as the upholstery that's used on the seats in their restaurants, their cups, their packaging. Think of the bright red McDonald's fry box, for example. A company like Whole Foods or John Deere that wants to conjure up a more peaceful or healthy thought employ the color of green, which psychologists tells us evokes images of running through green grass or green fields. These companies illustrate the importance of a brand, the carefulness of design to establish connotations in the minds of their audience. We'll end with a few examples of how successful companies integrate their logo into the corporate philosophy and messaging and use color to convey certain messages. Think of the South Korean corporation LG Electronics, for example. It has a red button logo configured as an on button with the letters L and G and a dot forming what appears to be a person winking in the center of the button denoting that they are literally a friendly company that values community. Their trademark tag tagline, Life's Good, aligns with the messaging that completes that highly effective connotation. Another example of integrated branding is the familiar red and yellow mollusk Shell uses to convey its logo. The Shell Oil Company originated as a trading company importing shells, and thus that points to their history. It ultimately grew into the massive oil conglomerate we know of today, but it continues to use the mollusk as a symbol of its echo cycle of oil exploration in general. As to the colors, the California company used red and yellow because those are the colors of the Spanish flag saluting the country of origin for many Californians. This integrated messaging embodied in Shell's logo is intended as a reflection of its heritage to build a bond with its customer base and to establish it as a legacy company. I certainly hope this vlog will help you create a persuasive and powerful 
logo or trademark that will convey the message that you want it to convey. Convey your corporate vision and your mission statement to your consumers and help you achieve a successful business. Join me next time for the next edition of The Business of Success. Look for it wherever you download your vlogs or go to businessofsuccess.biz. I'm Barry Schramm. Thank you for listening.